Welcome back. You're with Our Voices. This year, we featured Nigeria's Tope Oshin in our Women in Film episode. Tope is a filmmaker whose work includes MTV Niger's Sugar, as well as the movie Up North and New Money, which you can watch on Netflix. Tope, it's so nice to have you again. Same here. Good morning. Good morning. Well, good morning to you. You're in L.A. and, and uh, good afternoon to me here in Washington. Tope, this has been quite a busy year for you and for African women in the film industry. Um, what stood out to you the most this year? Did women make any, any gains? And what were uh, some of the obstacles that women in film encountered? Uh, well, from my part of the world, while I operate in Nigeria, it was a really good year for women. Um, we got some of the biggest movies uh, made from the country by women. Um, also talking about productions on television where um, sort of led by women. So, I mean, for us, by and large, it was a year that we saw a lot of female producers and directors doing the best work from the country that represented the country, you know, um, internationally as well. And I think that, I mean, in Nigeria, it was indeed the year of the woman. Um, that much I can say. Absolutely. And in fact, we spoke about the movie Lionheart, which was uh, directed by Nigeria's Genevieve Njai, which was disqualified from the Oscars. And of course, there was a lot of criticism um, about that. It was disqualified because it is a majority English film. Um, did you think that the criticism um, that the Oscars received for barring that movie, um, do you think that, that uh, the criticism was deserved? Um... Personally, my personal views are quite mixed. Um, to start with, I feel like the argument um, and the opera should have been about the criteria for entering films to have changed when the name of the category changed from foreign language film to best international film. Um, I feel like our fight then should have been that the, the clause that had to do with uh, the percentage of, langu of local language within the film should have been adjusted to reflect the new title of Best International Film, um, knowing that there are countries like Nigeria, you know, whose lingua franca is English, you know, and there are also similarly other countries in Africa who are colonized by the French. So, you know, their unifying language is French. And I think that was the majority of the argument on Twitter and on the Internet about um, Lionheart, you know, being that English is the unifying language in Nigeria. We have well over 520 languages and English is, is what unites us all. That's how we communicate. You literally can have five people from Nigeria in the same room and speaking local languages, we wouldn't understand each other, you know. So for me, though, I feel like the argument should have, to the Oscars, you know, the criticism to the Academy should have been that, you know, the foreign language clause should have been amended, um, so that it would be more inclusive, so that truly when you have films from other part of, parts of the world, um, like we had Lionheart, it could have accommodated us more or accommodated us better in a fairer light, seeing that we are now not saying, um, we're now not talking about films that are not in English, but films from other parts of the world. You know, this is what I feel the criticism should have been. Um, not that it's marginalization against films from Nigeria or films from Africa or films from women or films from black people, but just, you know, properly representing what it means to be um, in the best international film category. Um, yeah. So, but I think that one of the many reasons why you as a filmmaker resonate with so many people is because you are changing the idea of what a director looks like. And thanks to you and others, it's becoming the norm to see women make films. What does that responsibility mean to you? And is it fair to hold you accountable for being a role model? Uh, for me, it's very important that young women and young girls in Nigeria and Africa and in the world in general um, have models to look up to, have women like me to say, Tokwa is doing it so I can do it too. That's sort of what I didn't have starting out um, as a director when I did um, 15 years or so ago in Nigeria. Um, I literally had just one model, and that was Amaka Igwe. I made a, eventually made a documentary about her um, to talk about this, and that was the biggest thing for me. The biggest difficulty, actually, was that I had no one to look up to except her. And, again, I didn't feel like I could look up to her like that because I 
felt like she was, you know, huge, this huge woman who, you know, most people didn't see as a woman and all of that. And which is one of the reasons why I made my documentary, um, Amaka's Kin, The Women of Nollywood, which was like an expose on the very few female directors that we had in Nigeria at the time. I made this documentary four years ago. Um, for me, it was really important that young girls who wanted to be more than actors, to be directors, to work behind the cameras, could look at me, could look at Kemi Adetiba, could look at Omoni Oboli or, you know, other, my female contemporaries and say, it's possible, I can call the shots, I can tell my own stories, I can do that without feeling like nobody's going to listen to me, which is sort of what I felt like in the beginning. I said, you know, I'm just a girl, I'm shy. Who is going to listen to me? Who is going to listen to my small voice and say, I have a story to tell? Are they going to believe that I know what I'm talking about? You know, so this is why it's important for me um, to be here to continue to be here, to continue to put my work out there so that it's seen, you know, beyond just saying um, this film is directed by Top Boy Oshin, to put it out there and for people to know that this is a woman, she's operating in Nigeria, she's operating in Africa, she's operating in the world, you know, as a woman, I think this is one of the things that um, I really like about Nigeria is the fact that we, women, female directors, female producers are getting up and doing it um, for ourselves. We, um, are no longer in that age when we believe that we need the permission of the men or the permission of anybody or the permission of even our audience uh, to tell the stories we want to tell. We simply and basically decide, I'm going to tell the story. I want to make a movie. I'm going to take it to the cinemas or I'm going to you know, put it on Netflix or whatever. I'm going to make people see my story. And, you know, we are doing it and we find that the boundaries are just in our minds. It, the boundaries are where you put them. Um, you know, but if you say to yourself, I'm going to do this and I'm not, nothing is going to stop me, we do it and we are doing it and we're living testimonies of that. And this is an, a great encouragement for young women and young girls in Nigeria and in Africa to see that we just get up and tell our stories. We just get up and do what we need to do. And you know, while we're doing that, we're also striving for excellence so that we are not being favored as women to say, okay, this is a film made by a woman, so I'm going to watch it in the cinemas. Nobody does that. This is a good film. I'm going to watch it in the cinemas. And that is what we're working towards, to make excellent films, period. Either made by women or not, we're making films that resonate and that uh, our audience can connect to and, you know, people can be proud of in general as films from Nigeria. You know, what you're talking about seems to have been the theme of 2019, not just for women in film, for but for also women in business or women in the arts. And here at the table, we have decided that 2019 was a pivotal year for women in film and for women in sports. Um, how would you describe this year? I think it would be very correct to say that 2019 is the year of the woman. Um, and, and that's everywhere in the world because we've had a lot of very important conversations that have come up um, this year as relates to the woman um, concerning gender equality, concerning um, rape, um, concerning, um, I mean, name it, like just like you said, in film, in sports, in everything, we, we sort of have seen internationally that women are getting up and speaking up for themselves and refusing to be marginalized and refusing to be victims. You know, above all, we we have so many really cool hashtags on Twitter and on social media now fighting for the woman and ensuring that, you know, we are not in that space where we allow things happen to us. But we are speaking up and saying this will no longer happen to me because I refuse to be a victim. I refuse to be in that space um, where things are happening to me. But I rather want to start up conversations in the world and, um, you know, to take a place for myself. So it would be right if we said 2019 internationally, as well as in Africa, is the year of the woman um, and women emancipation across the world. Tobe, thank you so much. You've given us a lot to think about. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Well, here's a look at some of Tope's work. has been nothing but a complete gentleman. I promised your father before he died that I will And I'll get an education. I know. Don't be misapposed to bring money for this house. Another man did here. Peter, what is your problem? You will not be kind. God bless, give me what? God bless, give me what? Me what you are here. I 
don't we start with you telling me why you're here? That's just a quick look at some of Tope Ocean's work. And I have to say, she is not just very talented, but she's also one of the nicest women that I've worked with on the show. And of course, she there's we have a long list of women of which we can say the same of. Mm -hmm. 